Well, good rainy morning. It is raining, isn't it? It is Tuesday, April the 2nd. We're going to go straight into the King James Bible, the book of Leviticus, chapter 3. And if his oblation be a sacrifice of peace offering, if he offer it of the herd, whether it be male or female, he shall offer it without blemish before the Lord. And he shall lay his hand upon the head of the offering and kill it at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. And Aaron's sons, the priest, shall sprinkle the blood upon the altar round about. And he shall offer of the sacrifice of the peace offering an offer made unto fire unto the Lord, that the fat covering the inwards and all the fat that is upon the inwards, and the two kidneys and the fat that is on them, which is by the flanks and the call above the liver with the kidneys, it shall be taken away. And Aaron's son shall burn it on the altar upon the burnt sacrifice, which is upon the wood that is on the fire. It is an offering made by fire of a sweet savour unto the Lord. And as if, if, if his offering for a sacrifice of peace offering unto the Lord be of the flock, male or female, he shall offer it without blemish. If he offer a lamb for his offering, then he shall offer it before the Lord. And he shall lay his head upon this offering, his, his hand upon the head of this offering, and kill it before the tabernacle of the congregation. And Aaron's son shall sprinkle the blood thereof round about the altar. And he shall offer of the sacrifice of peace offering, an offering made by fire unto the Lord. The fat thereof and the whole rope, rump, it shall be taken off hard by the backbone, and the fat that covereth the inwards, and all the fat that is upon the inwards, and the two kidneys, and the fat that is upon them, which is by the flanks, and the call above the liver with the kidneys, it shall he take away. And the priest shall burn it upon the altar. It is the food of the offering made by fire unto the Lord. And if his offering be a goat, then he shall offer it before the Lord. He shall lay his hand upon the head of it and kill it before the tabernacle of the congregation. And the sons of Aaron shall sprinkle the blood thereof upon the altar round about. And he shall offer thereof his offering, even an offering made by fire unto the Lord. The fat that covereth the inwards and all the fat that is upon the inwards. And the two kidneys and the fat that is upon them, which is by the flanks. And the call above the liver with the kidneys, it shall he take away. And the priest shall burn them upon the altar. It is the food of the offering made by fire for a sweet savour. All the fat is the Lord's. It shall be a perpetual statute for your generations throughout all your dwellings, that you eat neither fat nor blood. Hmm. It ends there. Kind of interesting, isn't it? You shall eat fat, neither eat fat nor blood. A perpetual statute for your generations. You know, when God says a perpetual statute, he means that, you know, continual, forever, you know. It shall be a perpetual statute for your generations throughout all your dwellings that ye eat neither fat nor blood. The detail that Lord goes into demands an act of obedience by Aaron and his sons and ultimately subsequently by the Levitical priesthood as, as they follow in the generations as it's been laid down by God. He is demanding obedience. They have been a stiff-necked people seeking their own ways, seeking their own gods. And the strange thing is, is that a program I watched the other day on, on Egypt, and uh, this e Egyptian archaeologist was showing us temples that have been discovered and, and dated, and they were very similar, in fact, to the temple of the tabernacle that, that God had commanded. I mean, they were four square. They had um, horned corners. 
they were altars of sacrifice. And uh, so it was a similar system. God was introducing them to something that was very similar to what they already knew. But of course, the, the ultimate purpose of this was for just for one God, not multiple deities, because it is the one God that is speaking to them. It is our God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob speaking to them. And so he wants to make clear that the sacrificial system was right, but it was to the wrong God. So this is not dissimilar to what they've already known and, and, and seen and, and probably participated in in those years that they were in captivity. Well, first of all, freedom, and then ultimately captivity in Egypt. So he's not introducing something that's wildly unexpected or different. This is something they knew, but it is purposeful, and it is full of detail, which demands obedience. And we'll see a little later on just how being disobedient to God can be fatal. And, and, and that will be an illustration to us to, to carry forward into our lives that, you know, we may not get struck by a bolt of lightning. We might, but we may not be. But disobedience to God can bring about the long-term eternity of separation from him, the second death. And so therefore, you know, we must take note that these people were doing their best to be obedient to God. And later on, we'll actually read in one of the prophets that God says he knew they couldn't achieve it. He knew they couldn't live up to everything that he had laid down before him. Because what he had done was, he had said, okay, you're stiff-necked people. You want to do things your way, and this is how you used to do things in Egypt, so we're going to do the similar sort of thing, but it's going to be to me, and this is how you're going to gain your righteousness. But they couldn't do it. They couldn't do it. They had to keep going back. They had to keep sacrificing their first fruits. They had to perpetually go through the motion all over again, because the moment they left the temple and sinned, they had to be cleansed again. The moment they touched something that was unclean, they had to be cleansed again. They couldn't do it on their own, and we cannot do it on our own. We cannot do it on our own. We cannot say, okay, I've got the Bible. I read it now and again. I don't need to go to church. I'm in touch with God. I know who God is. I'm going to do this my way. You can't do it. You can't do it. You have not received the Holy Spirit. You have not acknowledged the Holy Spirit in your life. You have not yielded to the power of the Holy Spirit and the conviction of him upon your heart. You cannot call yourself a Christian. You are a Christian by lip service only. As indeed the Israelites were paying lip service to God. Oh yeah, we're going to do everything you said. We're going to do it your way. Then they'd walk out of the temple, sin, and have to go through it all again. Well, God gave us the final sacrifice. He kept, it was in perpetuity, the sacrificial system. Right up to the point where he gave us the final unblemished lamb, Jesus Christ who in this last weekend we celebrated, dying on the cross for us, laying in the tomb during the Sabbath, and rising on the third day, defeating death. The unblemished lamb paid for our sins. And all we have to do is accept that and let him into our hearts, into our hearts, not into our mouths, not lip service, not superficially, but deep down inside us, into our hearts, we have to accept him as the final sacrifice and say, thank you, Lord Jesus, for dying for me, for paying the price that I could not pay because I am a sinner. I will continue to sin and I am so sorry, Lord, because when I do sin, it is not a deliberate sin. It is by accident, but I will nonetheless sin. Now, I'm not taking a Calvinistic approach here. I'm not saying you can willingly go out and sin and be cleansed by the 
by the blood of Jesus Christ. No, that is not accepting the power of the Holy Spirit. But we do by default sin because we are human and we are faulty by nature. We are not the perfect unblemished lambs. There was only one. So our sacrifice will never do. It is impossible. You cannot circumvent that final sacrifice that Jesus made for us. You just have to accept it and let him into your heart, deep down inside of you. Cleanse your mind of everything and you will know when the power of the Holy Spirit comes upon you. Because like that young lady did the other day, Destiny was her name, she told me, she said, I went home after giving my heart to Jesus Christ and I just wanted to purge my life and cleanse of all the unclean things in my life. Hallelujah. And you will get that feeling too when you submit to the Lord God Almighty because he loves you and I love you too. I know it's a rainy day, but it's a day that God has made. It is a day the Lord has made. Thank you, Lord. Enjoy it. And if you need to take another rest day because you can't work, then by all means rest. Get out your Bible. Absorb yourself in, in pastors on TV. Go watch reruns of Rise and Shine. Go watch reruns on Facebook of, of our sermons at, that get published every weekend on Sundays from Mountaintop Ministry. Absorb yourself in the Word of God. Bye for now. Speak to you tomorrow.